Welcome. There are several versions of a video on YouTube of a testimony by Don Easterbrook to a Senate committee about global warming, where he claims to expose the scam of global warming. The purpose of this video is to look at the scientific accuracy of that testimony. This testimony was given in 2013. This is what a normal Senate committee meeting looks like, with all the senators there, lots of press and a large audience. Normal hearings are given under oath. However, this was classified as a working session. That means that the person doing the testimony doesn't have to tell the truth. Second, note the sparse attendance of the committee members. There's less than half of the committee and staff present at this particular meeting. Also note the screen. It's facing away from the senators and towards the cameras. So this gives the impression that this is not actually a real hearing, but more of a made for television event. He claims that he has no scientific or political bias. He said that he received no funding from the fossil fuel industry and he has no political affiliations. In reality, according to the D Smog blog, uh, is very different. He's a regular speaker at the Heartland Institute that receives millions of dollars to employ speakers like Dr. Easterbrook to come and talk. He seems to have ties to the Tea Party and also to Mark Morano and Lord Moncton, who are anything but apolitical. His testimony is based on eight claims. The first is that global warming ended in 1998. Second, the globe is cooling. The Antarctic ice sheet is growing. Sea level rise is 7 inches per century, not 20 feet. Snowfall is not below normal. CO2 cannot cause global warming. Severe storms are not more frequent than normal. And the oceans are not acidic. Now some of these claims are completely untrue. And other ones are not positions taken by those advocating global warming. He then indulges in what I call graph abuse. He shows this plot of the temperature anomaly over the last 130 years. He then starts discussing trends in the data. He points out that in the later part of the 19th century there was a cooling trend, followed by a 40-year period of warming, followed by another cooling period, followed by another warming period to 1998, and since then it's been cooling. Further, he then predicts that there'll be another 20 years or so of cooling. You just can't pick and choose the periods you want to analyze because they support your point. Further, just because the graph is going up and down doesn't mean there isn't any global warming. Let me illustrate. Let's assume that what he's done is correct, which is not, uh, but let's just take the median temperature in each one of these ranges in the cooling and warming period. So we're to put a blue dot in the middle of the global cooling trend and similarly a red dot in the middle of each of the warming trends. Now you'll notice that there's a trend in the overall uh, shape of the dots. We can draw a line along those things, and that is global warming. So his own plot actually shows global warming, though he denies it. Let's just see how good his prediction was. Here it is, a slow cooling trend for about the next 40 years, starting in 1998. So what actually happened? Well, here's the next three years worth of data added to that curve. Now, as you can see, just about the time that he was giving this talk, making his prediction, his predictions were going hideously wrong. In fact, the temperature plot shot upwards. So he is now predicting temperatures that are 0 0.7 degrees centigrade cooler than they currently are. And that's a very large margin in climate of physics. Let's take a closer look at this plot. One of the problems with determining short-term trends is the amount of variability. And that is in part due to the so-called ENSO cycle. This is the cycle between a warm Eastern Pacific, which is the El Nino phenomenon, and a cool Eastern Pacific, which is the La Nina phenomenon. So let's put on this plot here the times of strong El Ninos. That we're going to mark with red dots. Then we'll mark the times of strong La Ninas with blue dots. And you can see that both curves show an upward trend. And in fact, you can fit the same mathematical function to both of these sets of points. This means that his two first assumptions are incorrect. First, that there's been no global warming since 1998. And two, that in fact, there's been a cooling trend since 1998. Neither of those are true. 
What this tells us actually is you need to look at at least 20 years, preferably more, worth of data before you can actually define a trend. In the video, he goes on to try to show an anti-correlation between global temperatures and carbon dioxide. He claims that up to 1945, there were virtually no carbon dioxide emissions, and that after the war, uh, the post-war boom produced a large amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This, of course, is nonsense. Let's put on here the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And you can see throughout this period, carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere was increasing. In fact, it's been increasing since the beginning of the 19th century. Before 1910, virtually all of the energy was produced from coal, which is a very dirty source of energy and produced a lot of aerosols. So you had a cooling trend. In 1910 started the oil boom and motor cars, and so that is a cleaner form of energy, and so you have a lower, lower proportion of um, aerosols in the atmosphere to uh, cool the atmosphere, so you get start of getting a warming trend. Uh, after the war, there was, a large amount, there was a large amount of reconstruction that produced a large amount of uh, aerosols. And those aerosols produced smogs. The smogs were very common in London when I was a school kid. Um, very choking, nasty things they were too. Those are aerosols. But in the 70s, people started to pass clean air acts. And this got rid of the, the uh, smog content, or at least reduced it. Uh, so we started seeing the full effects of the increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. He then went on to show this particular plot where he says that over the last 500 years there have been 20 periods of warming and 20 periods of cooling, which is true. And he laid most of these down to natural causes, which again is true. He doesn't have the modern era on there because he says that's where the carbon dioxide started to increase, but we just learned that that's not true, that carbon dioxide started increasing all the way back to the late 18th century. So during that period, we've had six warming periods and only three cooling periods. So that would be the exact reverse of his particular case, that there's been greater warming while carbon dioxide has been increasing than there has been cooling. And why did he show this chart? There are much more up-to-date charts available to him, like this one. Why doesn't he show this chart? Because it doesn't have this part on it. It shows the warm period for the last 50 years is in fact exceptional over that 500 year period which is the exact reverse of the case that he was making and then he shows this chart claiming that uh, over the last 10,000 years temperatures have been much warmer than today well this is an old chart and you notice it only goes back 100 years which is before he claims that global warming took off which is course uh, a piece of manipulation uh, unworthy of a true scientist if we take the real chart it looks like this this was published in 2013 so the data would have been available to him if he'd cared to take a look but this was 2013 what if we add what's happened in the last three years let's do that oh dear now does it still look as though the um, Climate optimum from uh, 10,000 years ago is warmer than today? I don't think so. He then goes on to show this slide, which purportedly proves that the 1930s are warmer than today. Now, he does forget to mention a few things, that he's not actually showing temperature here. He's showing the number of temperature records set and the number of days over 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, he says well, there are over 1,000 um, sorry, there were over 10,000 um, re high temperature records set in 1930s. Now, that it sounds like a lot. However, in the last year, uh, we've had 40,000 new temperature records set. So, again, he is talking nonsense. The other thing is that this isn't uh, global temperature. This is just for the United States. What he should have shown is this plot. This is the global temperature over the last 130 years. And here are the 1930s. Now they look actually, on average, just slightly below average or about average. So there's nothing special about that period at all, contrary to his claims. 
He then goes on to claim that droughts aren't getting worse, but he doesn't show this picture. I wonder why. Any area on here that is red, light red or orange is having severe problems with water shortages. The yellow areas and the light yellow areas are normal or below normal uh, drought problems, so they're doing fairly well. But you can see basically half the land mass of the planet is suffering from some form of drought over the last hundred years. He then goes on to claim that the media won't tell you about the fact that global warming stopped in 1998. But if you do a search on that, you get over half a million hits on the web, including hits from The Telegraph, Forbes, Daily Mail, Scientific American, New Scientist, National Geographic, The Economist, BBC, The Guardian, Nature, New Statesman, ABC, Huffington Post, LA Times, The Express, Washington Post, The Independent, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, NBC, CBS, Fox News Network, MSNBC, and CNN, to name but a few. So again, his claim is complete and utter nonsense. And those were just the errors he made in the first 20 minutes. He seems to be telling the truth with lots of data to back him up. But when you look closely, it isn't true at all. It's just a bunch of lies. This is the end of part one. And if I get up enough enthusiasm to listen to any more of his nonsense, I'll do a part two for the next 20 minutes of his talk. Until next time, thanks for listening.